Hello, back again to do another unboxing and review. Today I have a brand new item in I ordered from Next Tool. This is the lightning flashlight, peep proof version. Um, so this is, besides obviously being a flashlight, it's a spy camera detector and a vibration sensing alarm. So really good for traveling, think like hotel rooms and whatnot. Um, I did have this imported. Uh, this comes from the uh, Chinese market in the surrounding area. And uh, it comes in two different colors, or at least two different colors. There's a red option, which is like a ref shiny reflective red. And then, of course, this one is the black. Okay, so let's go ahead and take a look around the packaging. All right. Look on the side. QR code, this side just the QR code, the back has quite a bit of information, let's look at the top first, nothing there, and the bottom, nothing there. Okay, so I'm going to go ahead and uh, take some stills of this so you can see all the information and, you know, pause the video if you want, so I'm going to do Alright, so overall impressions of the packaging, it's pretty good. Um, I especially like the um, stat, spec table on the back. I think that's really helpful, and I actually wish more items did that. So, And also, the box is um, pretty solid. Um, it's really, actually quite rigid, so that's also another plus. The only thing I'm not too crazy about on this packaging, and this probably only applies to the black version of this item is the fact that the black on black it's kind of hard to see this from a distance I mean you're really up close with the way you're seeing it now but if you see this from any significant distance like on a store shelf the only thing you can really see is this little silver cap here and then maybe some writing down there and I mean it doesn't really draw your attention all that well so but other than that um, I think they did a good job with the packaging so let's go ahead and get into the unboxing all right, so I went ahead and lifted up um, these little circle stickers. Um, here, I took one off. And you have to take them both off or peel both of them back in order to slide out the tray. So here we go. Let's do that. Okay. Right up top, we have the instruction manual. We'll look through this real quick. So, okay, so we have some pictures about how to operate it. Probably talking about like different modes, and this side is in Chinese. We'll see for the other side. All right, and there's the other side is in English. So yeah, camera detecting mode. And okay, great. Okay, so now let's go look at the actual item here. So we have well, a warning. We are, or what is it? Caution. Please fully charge before first use. So yeah, I will do that as I do with most of my items, but. Never hurts to have a reminder. Okay, and then we have the charge supply charging cable, which you can see is Type C. All right, and now the item itself. Oh, all right. So it comes with the carrying strap already installed, and this carrying strap is actually it's um, silicone, so and not just the normal rope nylon, but in silicon okay nice touch and all right here we have the uh, next tool charging port there oh and then I guess this twists off maybe is that what that's about well we'll figure out that later attachment anchor point for the linyard wrist strap. Alright, and then there's the LED. Oh, and uh, yes, this is um, nice smooth aluminum, so it actually feels nice. And here, give you an idea of just size. So, so far, so good. So um, let's look at the controls. Of course, we'll go into this in depth after I um, actually get it up and running. But there, 
this is most likely a button up here. Let's push it. Ooh. Okay, so it does have some charge, but I'm going to actually charge it before I use it. But you saw there, there's an LED, probably like a status of what mode it's in. I'm guessing. I haven't read the directions yet. And, um, yeah, here's also a button here. So what I'll do is I'll go ahead and charge it up. Oh, one other thing I wanted to show you. It has this, what looks to be... I was going to say porting, but this also might be where the sound um, comes out when you have it using it as an alarm. Um, but anyway, so so far I'm liking it. It feels nice. Um, all right, so I've had the chance to charge the device and also read the directions. And I'm going to go over how to be, operate this. And there's actually quite a bit to this, a lot of different modes and whatnot. But before we get to that, I wanted to show you this portion because earlier I did not. Um, I did kind of say, oh, I think this comes off, and the end effect does. So you follow the arrow by unscrewing it, like so. And then behind there, there is your spy camera detector. Notice you have the special lens. And then on this side here, you have the four red LEDs. And so the idea is you, put, you look through this side, and the LEDs illuminate the red light out. And looking through here helps you find the spy cameras. And we'll go into that more in detail later, but I just wanted to show you where that is. All right, so let's talk about um, charging. Um, since I said I just got done charging it, when you plug this device in using the supplied Type-C cable, of course, if you already have a USB Type-C cable, you could probably use that one too. Um, anyway, but when you charge it up, this light here will um, shine. And All right, so now let's talk about the many different functions. We're going to start off, since we just talked about charging and all that, I'm going to tell you the first um, thing you can do with this by pressing the main button right here. If you just quickly click it, and when I mean a click, I mean less than half of a second of push. All right, so like you think, like a mouse button, right? You just click it real quick, and there you go. So green, that tells me that this thing is charged, and based on how what color and how it flashes or doesn't flash, I'll tell you what state of charge it's in. So real quick, a flashing red light means it has insufficient power, and you have less than 20% battery in here. If it is a steady red, that means you have anywhere between 20 and 50% power. Uh, and if it is green, and that is they dub as sufficient power, and at that point you have anywhere from 50% all right, now let's go ahead um, and talk about the three different things this can do. First, there's the flashlight, then there's, of the, course, the alarm, and then the spy camera detector. So we'll start with the flashlight. So when this is off in this state, light not shining, nothing going on, if you press this button for, now I'm going to call this a press, not a click, a press, which we're going to classify as at least, well, let's say 0.5 seconds, all right? So half a second of a push. If you do that, that'll turn on the flashlight. All right, and be, while that's on, you can click this, again, click, so that would be less than half a second of push, right? You can click this button, and it'll switch between the two modes of flashlight, which are the um, high and low settings. Keep in mind, this also does have memory, so if you leave it on, like, let's say high, and turn it off, and again, to turn it off, you would push this for half a second, right? And the flashlight would turn off, and then next time you turn it on, it would be in high because that's where you left it so it has memory function all right now there's a, one other thing with the uh, flashlight is that well it's in any of the flashlight modes high or low you can double click this button just like you would on a mouse and then it'll go into strobe mode okay so flashing all right so now we've pretty much covered the flashlight part so now we're going to get to the um what they're calling uh, what do they call here one button alarm. So what one button alarm is, is while the unit is off, like this, if you push and hold this for two and a half seconds, so it's going to call push and hold, right? It The alarm will go off and it'll make noises and the light will flash. All right? Now, since we're talking about alarms, let's go to what they call access control alarm. I know it sounds real cool, right? Okay, what that basically is is the alarm mode, which um, the vibration detecting alarm mode. And to do that, you would go ahead, while the flashlight is off, you will, um, okay, you would pr double click um, this button here. So double click. And then what will happen is the LED will flash. I believe they said red. Um, yeah, you know, see. Do, 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 do. yeah, the red indicator will flash for five seconds. And then that lets you know like it's arming. And then after that, the light will go off. And that means now it's in a state of being armed. And we'll, we'll demonstrate this later, but if you hit it, then the alarm will go off and also the flight will flash. 
Now, if you've armed it, right, so the red light's flashing, it's about to arm, and for whatever reason you say, oh, I didn't mean to do that, you go ahead and I believe you double click, let's check, uh, yeah, so if you don't have to do that, since you have note, it, you can double click, yeah, so you can double click this, and then what will happen is it'll cancel that out. I think this will flash green and then let you know, okay, I'm de-armed, all right. Okay, now we have one more to go over, and that is the spy camera detector. So basically, again, you take this off, and then for this, you use this button here. So not this button, but this button over here, and then this will, kind of like the other button, if you press it for half a second, they'll turn on, so these LEDs will start flashing red. And while that's happening, you can, again, click this button to switch between the three different frequencies of flashing. So there's a slow, medium, and fast. And the point behind that is once you've found a camera that you or think you suspect is a camera, you switch the different between the high, low, and medium speeds. And if the, the reflection that you're detecting, which you think is a camera, if it matches the frequency that you're emitting from here, then you know it's a camera, spy camera, okay? So that's how that works. So, woof, with all that, we've covered all the different functions that this has. Um, yeah, kind of a long list, but that's cool because that just means more features, right? All right, so let's get to how this is to use as a flashlight. I did go ahead and take a few pictures uh, while using this and to give you an idea. But before we get to that, I thought I'd put some numbers on screen. So I went ahead and shined this on my Lux meter, and I collected some data. Now, notice I said Lux and not Lumens. However, if you care to, you can go ahead and with the numbers I'm going to put up on screen, you can go ahead and calculate how many Lumens that is. So here are the Lux numbers. All right, so now let's go ahead and look at those photos I took. Now, I should tell you, I'm going to start, I'm going to show you three photos. The first is without the flashlight on, the second with the flashlight low power, and the third is flashlight high power. Now, I want to say something about the first photo. It looks like the room isn't all that dark. You're going to be able to make out some things but keep in mind, it actually is darker than it appears on the photo. The first photo, the my camera was doing all its uh, <laughs> software and technical wizardry to try to get as much light into the photo as possible. So again, keep in mind, the first photo is actually is darker in there than you, it looks. Okay, so let's look at those photos. All right, so let's go ahead and test out the hanging uh, alarm, vibration sensing alarm. So I have it hanging from the doorknob there, and what I'll do is first I'm going to go ahead and activate it. You know how to do that, right? Double click on this guy here. Okay, you can see it's activating. Hopefully it stops shaking before it activates, right? Okay. Now I'm going to go ahead and turn off the light. I do have a little lantern here, kind of to, I don't know, maybe that would be like your night light or something, right? Okay, so now you're sleeping in your sketchy hotel room or whatever, and motel maybe, hopefully not. Anyway, so, and then someone tries to open the door, and there you go. Um, it's actually not that loud, but the flashing is sure um, intense. All right, so now it's time to cover the spy camera detector. As showed earlier, it's behind the screw off cap. And this button here, um, again, does the power for this portion of the device. There's no need to use the primary button, um, so you can control it all the way through here. And I will be showing you um, an actual demo of using this, but for right now, I just wanted to show you the lights and just how bright they are, the four red LEDs back here. Now, to do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to turn off, the, turn off the light in the room, the primary light, leave just enough light for the camera to focus on this, and then I will go through the different uh, frequencies or rates of flashing. All right, And I'm not just going to shine it straight in the camera because all you would see is a blare of red light. I'll be pointing it at the floor, and maybe I'll have it kind of like this so you can kind of see the LEDs at the same time. All right, so with that being said, here we go. There's the lantern. Here is the primary light off. Okay, so... 
here's the device if you can't see it and to turn it on you um, single push right and not a click but a press okay so there's the first flash and while this is flashing to cycle between the different flashes you just click the button so there's the next and and then one more click back to the slow flash and to get turned off you press and hold it or not press and hold but a one half second press and it's off all right, now to test out the spy camera detector, I'm going to go ahead and use this. Um, this is the Annika mini phone. I did a review on this a while ago. Remember him? Anyway, so the reason I'm going to use this is um, for a couple reasons. First of all, it has this kind of matte cover here, which is good because that'll soak up any of the um, reflected light. You know, shiny back case might reflect light, but this should absorb that. And the other reason is, well, of course, there's a lens, right? And in case you haven't figured out, the top portion here is the lens. The bottom, the white circle, the smaller circle, is the flash. So we're going to use this as our spy camera. Pretend that's a, you know, hidden and tied up teddy bear eye or whatever, okay? And I'm also going to leave this flash exposed. And the reason why is I want to use it for contrast. So right now with the lights on, no need for a spy camera detector, just using your naked eye, the most obvious thing here would, would be the white circle, right? White on black, easy contrast, white's bright, and even in low lights you should be able to see the white circle more prominent. But if the spy camera detector really works and really pinpoints out lenses, the lens should be more prominent than the white circle when we actually test this out. So that's my thinking on this, and we'll see if I was right about it or if this thing actually even works. Okay, so I'm gonna go ahead and get this set up. All right, so I have the camera, or mini phone, in this case spy camera, right, leaned up against the door there. Now I have turned off the lights in the room almost completely, just enough for you to still see kind of where it is over there and for the camera to kind of focus. Now, turning off the lights would obviously be your first step if you are allowed to or able to um, turn on them off in the scenario you find yourself needing to look for spy cameras because this obviously makes things way easier. So what I'll do now is go ahead and hold this the, the device in front of the camera lens and uh, hopefully this all comes up. Now I am really close, I'd say one, two, maybe two and a half feet away from the camera. Now that's giving you like the best, what do you call it, handicap because we're so close so but hopefully this shows up and if you might have to look at from a little more distance in an actual situation but anyway for the case of demonstration we'll do it at this range and here we go to so turn it on again half second click all right so if you look through there here center there uh if it's working you should be able to see the reflection of the camera lens and it, you might know as I'm trying to move this, I'm also looking through the viewfinder here, but it's kind of doing multiple things, but there you go. You do have to kind of orient yourself so you're kind of in line. It kind of works a little off-center, but it works best if you're getting a perpendicular um, blast at it, because then you get the full reflection, right? All right, so back here with the lights on, I just want to briefly um, remind people that if you're going to use this particular one or any device that operates on this principle, uh, shine the lights looking through the lens deal to find spy cameras you're going to have to put in a little time and get good at using it the reason is is because you can get a lot of false positives if you don't know what to look for a lot mainly shiny things especially circular and shiny things can make you think that they're a spy camera when they were really not uh, examples are doorknobs at a distance or i don't know a bolt on the wall that has a shiny um, dome type head that could be mistaken as a lens because it's obviously going to reflect light, right? So anyway, you're going to have to kind of get used to it. And it's best to practice before you find yourself in a situation where you actually have to know the difference and you're not able to. Okay? So, all right. So we're going to get to the conclusion here in just a moment. But I want to stop and make a quick disclaimer. And that is on the use of this item, my use of this item. And that's to say I've used it for about as long as it takes took to make this uh, review. I did use carry it with me a few days to you know see how it fits in this pocket or my bag or whatnot and of course to take those pictures that you saw earlier in the review but I have not used and abused this thing so I haven't dropped it numerous times I haven't hit it against a rock or a wall I haven't dropped it in a puddle you get the idea so how long it'll last if you do that kind of stuff to it I can't tell you 
I can tell you that it does seem to be pretty well made. And I would say the needle leans a little more towards the luxury side. The corners are nice and rounded. The materials feel great in the hand. Now, how rugged it is, eh, I'm not so sure. But it does seem well made, at least for the things I just mentioned. Okay, so while with that out of the way, let's get to the conclusion. Would I recommend this? And I'm going to say it depends. If you are looking for all three, the alarm, the flashlight, and the spy camera detector all wrapped in one convenient package, yeah, this does it actually quite well. However, if you're looking for one of those more than the other, say you just need a flashlight or you just need a spy camera detector or just an alarm, I would say you should go with another dedicated tool for each of those things I mentioned. And out of all those, let's talk about the alarm because for me that was kind of the biggest letdown on this. The flashing light, excellent. I mean, I could see that probably a mile away. But the noise, it was just way too soft. Now, I don't know, is mine maybe too soft and all the other ones are nice and loud? I don't know. But I'm going to have to assume since my packaging is not damaged and the item has no sign of abuse on it, it was brand new and it doesn't look to be damaged, I'm going to have to assume, therefore, that they're all that way. And if that's the case it's not going to wake you up out of a sleep. And therefore, yeah, it's just not really functional as a get-me-up alarm. Now, one other thing, people are probably going to want to know the price of this device. And so, again, that's going to depend on who you get it from and where you get it from. I did have to have this imported after all. And I can say that the normal price they have it around is around that $33 mark. But I think you could probably do a little better than that. And if you're getting it in the 20s, yeah, it's pretty good for that price. 